collecting a bag sample from a gof stream. During this presentation, you'll be shown the correct procedure for collecting a bag sample from a gof stream. No two mines have exactly the same conditions. To get an accurate reading, there are some standard processes you need to follow. This will ensure that readings are obtained from the most appropriate sample point using an effective sampling method. The result will be a high quality gof sample. First, you must look around the tailgate shield towards the gof edge. It is important to inspect the roof and ribs for signs of instability. Look for fractures or sagging in the roof and rib. If there is any indication that the strata is unstable, you must not continue until appropriate risk controls are in place. If you can safely access the gof edge between the last shield and the tailgate rib line, do so holding your handheld gas detector out in front of your face. This will allow you to test the quality of the air you're about to walk into. This is important to ensure you are not exposed to any high concentrations of gas. With your gas detector held out in front of you, continue to test the atmosphere for any signs of flammable, toxic and noxious gas. Your detector will give an immediate indication of any gas in the area. If there is only a small amount of gas present, you may record a reading like this. If abnormal levels of gas are present, your detector will record varied results like this. After you have used this process to monitor the general body of air in the area, we need to find the gof stream. While facing the gof, hold one arm above your head and move it from side to side to feel the warmth of the airflow. When holding your hand towards the roof, you should feel a current of air that is clearly warmer than anywhere else. This stream may be relatively thin and towards the higher side of the seam if there is one. The temperature only needs to be greater than 1 degree Celsius for the Gulf Stream gas to set up a microventilation circuit that causes the gas to migrate to the higher side of the roof. The warm spot you can feel is the current of air coming from the part of the Gulf where oxidation is occurring. This point is typically referred to as the true Gulf Stream. To help you understand exactly what is happening in the gof, let's take a look at the oxidation process and how heat is generated by the chemical reaction taking place. Oxidation is a natural process. We cannot stop it from occurring. All we can do is identify the early warning signs. Coal is predominantly carbon. The oxygen in the air will attach itself to the carbon in the coal and for some reason one day a chemical reaction will occur with the carbon and oxygen combining to produce heat, CO2, or carbon dioxide, and CO, carbon monoxide. First, we will see an oxygen deficiency in the sample because some of the oxygen has been lost or trapped. Next, we see an increase in temperature. Then, as the coal heats and breaks down, we see additional CO2 and then CO and other hydrocarbon gases. Regardless of the chemical reaction, the very first sign that we can actually feel is the increased temperature of the air and the gases given off by the oxidation process. If not managed appropriately, over time you could see a significant change in the readings taken from the Gulf Stream. This indicates the situation is escalating towards a potential heating or spontaneous combustion event. When holding your handheld detector in the warm air, you may find that it could be low in oxygen and high in methane, carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide. If this happens, you must record the results in your notebook or tag. Make sure you include your location, the date and time, your name, the barometric pressure reading and the temperature of the airstream. Next, you must determine the temperature of the gof stream. This is a very important step in the process because increased temperature is the first warning sign of oxidation. Any temperature above the geothermic gradient is an indication that oxidation is taking place. For every 50 metres that you go underground, the rock temperature increases by 1 degree Celsius. The air in the gof can only be as warm as the surrounding virgin rock or coal temperature. This means that if the temperature of the air is higher than the virgin rock or coal temperature, additional heat is being produced by oxidation taking place. 
Now that you understand the basic principles of geothermic gradient, the oxidation process and its effect, let's return to the process of getting the temperature reading. Remember, the airstream will be totally saturated. As a result, the wet and dry bulb reading will be the same. This means there is no need to rotate the whirling hygrometer for two minutes, as you would normally to determine the effective air temperature. To obtain a temperature reading, simply hold your hygrometer in the airstream until you see the temperature stop increasing on your temperature gauge. This will usually happen in less than two minutes. You can then record the temperature. To take a bag sample, hold the pump inlet directly in the Gulf Stream air. While pumping up the bag, fill and empty it at least three times. Be sure to fully purge the bag before refilling it. After your final draw, seal the bag well to prevent any leakage or loss. If the coal seam is high and you cannot reach the roof, to reach the Gulf Stream use a piece of conduit up to 2 metres long. The conduit should contain a thin plastic tube up the centre. The end of the tube must be exposed to the outside through a hole drilled about 50 millimetres from the top. Remember that the diameter should be large enough to firmly hold the handle to the whirling hygrometer. This will enable you to measure the true temperature as close to the roof as possible. So to recap, here's how to get the best quality bag sample from a Gulf Stream. Always look around the tailgate shield towards the gulf edge. It is important that you observe the roof and ribs for instability. If there is any indication that the rock is unstable, you must not continue until appropriate risk controls are put in place. As you approach the gulf edge, always test the quality of the air you are entering by holding your handheld gas detector straight out in front of you. To find your true gulf stream, hold your hand above your head as close to the roof as possible and feel for the stream of air that is warmer than the other areas. Record your results accurately and clearly. Only record the final temperature reading obtained from your hygrometer after approximately two minutes. When taking your bag sample, fill and empty your bag at least three times. Ensure that after you have taken your bag sample from the Gulf Stream, the bag is sealed correctly to prevent any leakage. And finally, remember that any heat migrating from the Gulf at any location along the face is your primary indicator that oxidation is taking place. In this case, additional samples should be taken from the location of the heat source to further monitor the possible oxidation. The integrity of this process is critical. It has been developed to provide the very best opportunity to detect what may be the early warning signs of an impending catastrophic event. It is important that you are vigilant in following this process to prevent your results and the safety of yourself and others from being compromised.